talk a little bit about scouting. <coughs> um, scouting in um, integrated pest management in the greenhouses is, is actually uh, a pretty learned process. Um, and scouting is a form of monitoring that I'd like all of you to get in the habit of doing. And it's looking for problems which you're not aware of. And that's what scouting does, is you're constantly looking for things. The best scout in a greenhouse is the person on the water hose. That's why we don't put the least experienced person on the water hose, because that person, we want them to be scouting. And scouting refers to a regular system, systematic inspection of your crops and growing areas. And a good scout, a good scouting program is an early warning system. And it also helps you monitor problems that you are aware of. So if you know that you've got an outbreak somewhere, you know you've got a part of your greenhouse that's going to be cooler and it's going to have more powdery mildew, uh, it's, it's a good way to help you monitor that process as well. And it should be done at least once a week by those individuals that work with the crop the closest. Scouting does not work, however, if you don't keep data. And if you don't keep record, because otherwise you have no way to determine what your thresholds are, or thresholds of infection. Now, scouting is not trapping, um, or just trapping. It's actually getting in. This is a Easter lily crop, and in front of this, this, this guy is thinking that by drawing the air across the greenhouse with this sticky fabric, he's doing all the scouting he needs to do. Well, that just tells you what's there. Some people use mass trapping. This is an example of a trapping system that's used in our own greenhouses here at uh, the university in the wheat plots where they're doing a mass trapping to do their scouting. So when you're scouting, some of the things you need to do is understand the concept of a threshold. And a threshold means what number of pests do you have, what's the level of damage that you can tolerate before you need to have take some kind of action. So by using thresholds, what we're doing is we're maintaining the level of efficacy that we can to avoid pesticide resistance. Now back in the days when I first started working in greenhouses, we did everything as a prophylactic spray application. What that meant is I sprayed once a week whether I had anything or not. And I was spraying products that were mass killers. They killed everything. Okay? Isn't that unhealthy if you spray with and you don't need it? Exactly. But in those days, we were using very harsh chemicals and we sprayed everything and we didn't build up any resistance. Now, with today's chemistry, we're using softer products that are more environmentally safe, more safe to the applicator, but they're specifically targeting individual organisms. And there's also the possibility we get more resistance. So it is an unhealthy practice. So <clears throat> do we need to treat the problem? Well, if you. I know growers out there, if they see one insect, their first response is to spray, 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 spray again, and then spray again. But if you don't know what your, your um, threshold is, we, need, we can make and do things with less damage. How do you know what to use? Well, you have to develop the thresholds. Now, this is a common threshold chart that works on any pest um, infection. The economic threshold is, the economic threshold is we're starting to see a decline in production. We're just seeing a decline in quality. But up to that point, anything under that is tolerable. Economic injury is where we're destroying our crop. So we're going to probably do our control. It could be a chemical control. It could be a bio. Uh, it could be a release of a bioorganization, biological or organism, and keep things down below the economic threshold. Every crop, however, is going to have a different e economic threshold. For instance, the economic threshold for white flies on a poinsettia is almost zero. 
one or two because the consumer does not want to buy a poinsettia that's got bugs on it. However, if you're growing greenhouse tomatoes, the economic threshold for white flies is probably 10 or 20 per plant, or maybe even 10 or 20 per leaf. Because the consumer is never gonna see that leaf, the consumer's only seeing the fruit. And as long as the plant is being productive, we can tolerate a small infestation of insects. That's a healthier attitude. So this pest infestation level is very dependent upon what the crop is. Most of us when you have seen in cut flower operations, those are some of the dirtiest greenhouses there are. Because there's leaves everywhere, there's stuff everywhere, but the people don't see that. They, whereas bedding plants, we need to have a cleaner crop. So scouting gives us better quality material. It's environmentally responsible because we're only, we're looking at the crop to make a decision on whether we need to apply something or not. And it's also going to save us money in the long run. What's the drawback? It takes time. You need to learn how to do it. it. Needs to spend some time in the greenhouse. Less time playing Sudoku in your office. Um, you need to spend in time, you have to get to know your crop get to know you, be uh, intimate with your crop. Most of our growers do this. You have a good grower and a water hose, they're doing it, they don't even know they're doing it. They're doing it, but they're doing it informally. It's better to have a formal process. So how do you get it started? First of all is you need to set up, you need to do a plan. Form a team, if you're starting a program, do it small, start small, and know the crop, and know the pests. Know what your pests are going to If you're a rose grower, you know you're going to have spider mites. If you're a snapdragon grower, you know you're going to have aphids. Okay? Be regular. Designate pest management units. In other words, is it a greenhouse range? Is it a set of benches? Is it a room? Keep records. And educate your staff on what you're looking for because you might miss it. In other words, everybody that goes in that greenhouse needs to be educated on what to look for, whether it's snails, slugs under the bench, whether it's white flies, mealybugs, they need to know what to look for. So who's your scout? Could be the laborer that's doing the transplanting and watering, should be the grower at least, Pesticide applicator. Pesticide applicator should be a scout as well because they need to know what they're looking for and where the insects are, what they're applying. Or you might use an external service. There are organizations out there that provide professional scouting. It's typically in areas where you have high concentrations of greenhouses or high concentrations of farms. Most of the agronomic industries use scouts, professional scouts, we call them crop advisors, where they are, you're actually paying somebody to come into your operation and scout for you. Now, what are some of the values of using a professional scout? Can you think of a value of using a professional scout? They can spot out pest damage. They can spot out pest damage. They also know what's going on at your neighbor's house. They are, they're familiar with the outbreaks. They're familiar with the weather. They look at the weather patterns. They're not looking at just your operation. If they're working with four or five, six different operations, they know the trends before they happen. So whoever your scout is, they must be acknowledged to have that responsibility. An informal assignment doesn't work well. Oh, and by the way, if you see an aphid out there, you need to tell me that's not right. You say, if you see aphids, you need to be looking for aphids and if you find them, and you need to meet formally with your scouts on a regular basis. Now what is a pest management unit, a PMU? It's a contiguous area that identifies what you're working with. It could be one crop, could be a section in your greenhouse, could be a bench, but it needs to be the same location over time, not 
calling one pest management unit this area this week, another one we're going to check this week, another one we're going to check next week, another one we're going to check over here. It needs to be contiguous in time as well so that you have a trend. Tools that you need to have, um, a lot of people use what's called a jeweler's loop or a set of um, eyeglasses that, that you can mount or a hand lens, uh, sample bottles for collecting samples, uh, colored flags. Um, we need to use, what the colored flags do is if you see an outbreak, that's uh, marking a spot for your uh, pesticide applicator because oftentimes the scout is not the pesticide applicator. And it also helps you come back to the same spot later on or you can tell the management staff, hey, there's an outbreak of aphids over here. You need to make a decision whether you're gonna throw those plants out, spray them, or deal with it. Um, personal data assistance, that's what we call cell phones now, or something like that with some spreadsheet software so you can track it, cameras, um, and probably one of the things that most people forget about is just, you know, what do you wear? Like a little apron with pockets to put stuff. You know, little contractor apron, aprons work very well. So here's an example of some tools that a scout would use. This is the jeweler's loop. Um, maximum minimum thermometers. Uh, I'm as geeky as the rest of them, but I still like to have that maximum minimum thermometer for, for tracking things. Um, sticky cards, uh, sticky cards, flags, such as that. The sticky cards, the yellow is, is generic, blue is for thrips only. Um, some tools that we use, the, the sticky cards. Um, another tool that we use are potato, pieces of potato. Uh, we can put potato slices on our, so our soil surface for monitoring fungus gnat larvae. Uh, pheromone traps. Uh, pheromone traps are great uh, for, especially if you're looking for specific quarantine specific insects like um, Japanese beetle. Um, I use pheromone traps in my own yard just to uh, control my uh, yellow jacket populations, but that's totally different. Uh, ELISA tests for viruses. You can get uh, test kits to test for TOSPA viruses uh, to see if you've got an infection of different uh, diseases. So some of the things that you do, visual inspection, you're looking for new problems. One of the things that I do when I scout a greenhouse is I squat down and look across the greenhouse at eye level. And I look for variations in uniformity. Also, I can walk into a greenhouse and I can usually spot a spider mite infestation probably from about 30 yards away just by looking at the different colors of the plant tissue. Okay. Uh, some greenhouse growers will drive me crazy. I go to Welby Gardens and I want to pick up a water hose because everything looks wilted because it is. That's a production practice they use. They grow things on the dry side so they don't have to use growth regulators. So a slow walk through, looking at everything. Naked eye, uh, loops, lenses, training. Constantly training your people. And a lot of times the pest problem dictates where you scout. Where do you look for an aphid infestation? You look for the aphid infestation because it's a phloem feeder. You need to know what your insects are looking at or where they're going. So you're gonna find them on the stems or on the leaf veins. Spider mites, you're gonna find them on the underside of the leaf surface. Western flower thrips, you're gonna look for them in the bloom because that's where they, they're a pollen feeder. That's where you'll find them first before you find them on the foliage. So understand where to look. Root rots, you're gonna have to pull some plants up and look at them, look at the roots. More plants inspected, more time, more problems, you're gonna catch them sooner. So one to 10%, in other words, one plant in 100, um, that's gonna give you a pretty good picture. You're gonna randomly select them, slow walk through, stop every five to 10 feet, three to 10 minutes per thousand square feet is what you need to sit. The scouting patterns that we're recommending, that are recommended, is to use the same pattern as you walk through the greenhouse every time. And you, if you need to do flags to keep your pattern going, this is the ideal way uh, in this, this figure on the right-hand side to evaluate your crop. Look for unusual growth. Look at sticky cards. 
inspect plants, don't forget to look under the bench. Those weeds under the benches, and everybody knows that's worked at Perk knows that I hate weeds under the bench. In fact, we use torches to control those weeds. Because um, that's a reservoir of insects and diseases. Also a place to look is outside the greenhouse, under the vents, outside the greenhouse. One of the challenges I have with working with some growers is trying to educate them that they can cut down on their pesticide applications by mowing the weeds around the property. Easy, get rid of the problem. So every 100 plants or so, stop and scout, visual survey, pick the leaf up, touch it, look for insects distortions, tap the flowers, you tap the flower onto a piece of card, white cardstock, the thrips will fall out or you can blow into the flower because they don't like humidity and they'll crawl out to see what's blowing at them. It's pretty funny. Uh, look what, uh, pick the plant up and see if anything flies off. Look for survey surface. Um, go early enough in the greenhouse and you look for snail tracks, slug and snail tracks. Uh, look for so discoloration and sloughing off of tissue. Now, you need to look at the av look at single life stages per leaf. Like if you work with white flies, you're going to have several different instars of the life of the life cycle of a white fly. That's why you all take entomology classes so you know what life cycles are. So just seeing carcasses or just seeing adults but no um, larvae or anything like that, you need to count the stages and record that. Look at the number of lesions for diseases. Look at your cards and be consistent every week and record it. All, every plant that you look at that you're going to take data on, you need to record it. And you need to summarize it for each pest management unit. And if you see a spot, then you flag it and tell the pesticide applicator or whomever is going to do the, the, the remedy what the color flag is and so forth. So this is um, a thrips population in our wheat greenhouses here. And you can see how uh, we're monitoring different pest management units over time to indicate whether and where we're going to take an action step. And new thrips per square inch. So, so we have a significant outbreak happening. You might also want to look at, this is for um, on uh, sticky cards, we're looking at fungus gnat adults and you can see where we see an outbreak and where we go in and do an application. Uh, Talstar is, a, is an insecticide and then we follow it up that with the kill, we go in with a, a long-term soil-borne application with Marathon. And then after things are kind of under control, we start out applying uh, Steiner Nemia. That's a um, uh, parasitic nematode that, it, that kills the larvae of, uh, of fungus gnats. So here you can see an application of how we're working with this. And we've got different pest management units, with south bench, middle bench, and north bench. So this is an example of what a scouting record should look like and where we've done these different applications. Now it's also important that the scout also goes into areas that have been sprayed so they can monitor the efficacy of the uh, outbreak, monitor the efficacy of the pesticide application. Um, is your pesticide application really working? And it's important that the scout work with the pesticide applicator to schedule the families of pesticides we're applying to eliminate uh, problems of resistance. Sticky cards is probably one of the best use tools we can have. You should make sure that each card has the pest management unit, the date that it was put out, and the side that you're going to monitor. Um, now this is a trapping system and we're going to use gridded cards and you want to make sure they orient them in the right way so that place them where you're most likely going to get insect outbreak. Sticky cards are worthless if you never use them and actually count your squares. So 
you need to make sure that you consistently count the same number, same area, so that you can look at it. Uh, you see our, our date here on the bottom, uh, November 6, 2003. It's an old card. And this is the pest management unit. We can monitor our outbreaks. If you don't monitor your card, there's no point in putting it out there. So here we can see this Gerber daisy uh, crop. And uh, this is the pest management unit. Here's a monitoring station where you got a sticky card and a pheromone trap, side by side, looking for different insect populations. <laughs>